Good morning everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. Today we celebrate the feast of St. John Brito. Our uh, text of today for the Gospel, for the Eucharist today is taken from John chapter 12, verse 20 to 32. But I today thought I'd like to um, also focus some of the saints, especially uh, the saints from India uh, who worked in this mission field. Uh, in the days to come, we have uh, two very interesting saints uh, today, St. John the Brito, and then in a few days from now, uh, St. Gonzalo Garcia, who is the patron of the Archdiocese of Versailles and the second patron of uh, the Archdiocese of Bombay. So, just to introduce you also from time to time to the life of the saints. So, St. John the Brito, uh, who uh, took on a name for himself, he renamed himself uh, Arul Anandar is often called the Portuguese St. Francis Xavier by Indian Catholics. He was born of uh, Portuguese aristocracy uh, on the 1st of March 1647 and he became a member of the royal court at um, a very young age of just nine. At this point of time, he became the companion to the young prince um, who later on became King Peter II, the very famous Portuguese king, King Peter II. Now, St. John the Brito, um, his father uh, was, his name was Salvador de Brito Pereira. Um, he died where, while he was serving as viceroy of the Portuguese colony in Brazil. When de Brito was very young, he himself almost died of an illness and his mother vowed that he would wear a Jesuit cassock for a year if he lived, if he was spared of that illness. Uh, we are told that uh, St. John de Brito regained his health and uh, keeping the vow that his mother made, he walked around the royal court uh, dressed like a miniature Jesuit. Now, de Brito truly desired, in his heart he also desired to be a Jesuit. And despite pressure from the prince, who, to, who he was very close to, and the king, he entered the Jesuit novitiate in Lisbon. He entered the, the novitiate in December 17, 1662. Now, at this point of time, he was just 15 years old. 15 years old but that was his strong desire to be a Jesuit. He went on to study in the very famous University of Coimbra. St. John Brito then wrote to his superior general in the year 1668 asking to be sent to the East as a missionary. Now when John's mother knew that her son was going to India she was greatly disappointed and she did not want him to go. She used all her influence to prevent him leaving his own country. So she went um, and persuaded the papal nuncio to literally intervene. Now, uh, St. John the Brito gave a very interesting answer. He says, not to answer the vocation as I ought would be to provoke the justice of God. As long as I live, I shall never cease striving to gain a passage to India. So his desire to go and serve in the mission field of India was so strong. St. John de Brito was ordained in February of 1673. He then left Lisbon for Goa somewhere in mid-March. So February was ordained by mid-March. He left for Goa, for India and he arrived um, the following September. So that must have been a long journey as you can see from March all the way down to September in those days. Those journeys to India were perilous to say the least. He arrived as a young father de Brito and he worked in the mission fields of Madurai. When he studied the Indian uh, caste system he discovered that most Christians belonged to the lowest and the most despised castes. He thought that members of the higher caste would also have to be converted for Christianity 
to have a future in India. He therefore became an Indian ascetic, uh, what was called at that time uh, Pandaraswami. Since these Pandaraswamis were permitted to approach individuals of all castes and um, what he did was he established a small retreat in the wilderness. Now, St. John the Brito, at that time Father John the Brito, was one of the earliest Jesuit missionaries in India to adopt elements of the local culture in his evangelization. The Madurai mission was, was really a bold attempt to establish an Indian Catholic Church, something that we have still been struggling with in India. As such, St. John the Brito learned the native languages. Um, he went about also dressed in uh, yellow cotton and he lived like a sannyasi. He abstained from every kind of animal food. He abstained from all wine. St. John the Brito tried to teach the Catholic faith in uh, in simple categories, in categories and concepts that would make sense to the people he taught. This method proposed and practiced by Robert de Nobili, another Jesuit, met with remarkable success. As he became well known, the number of conversions um, under, his, under him greatly increased in the Madurai region. St. John the Brito was then made superior in Madurai and after 11 years on, in the mission fields, um, he then became, as it were, the object of hostility from a group of people, the Brahmins, who began to resent the success of his work. And so they plotted to kill him. He and some catechists were captured by soldiers in the year 1686, and uh, they were bound in heavy chains. When the soldiers threatened to kill uh, St. John the Brito and his uh, catechists, uh, he very boldly offered his neck, but they did not act. After spending almost about a month in prison, the Jesuit was then released from captivity. When he got back to Madurai, he was uh, asked to return to Portugal and to report on the status of the work, the missions in India. He reached Lisbon 10 months later and when he received in Lisbon, he was received like a hero. He toured the various universities and colleges and he described um, his various adventures of his missionary life here in India. His boyhood friend, if you remember I spoke of him at the start of this teaching, was at that point of time a young prince. Now his boyhood friend had now become the King Peter II. And King Peter II of Portugal asked him to remain home. Uh, he wanted John de Brito to tutor his two sons. But de Brito placed the needs of India above the comfort of the Portuguese court. De Brito once again sailed to Goa and returned to his mission in Madurai. And he arrived now in November of 1690. He comes this time with 24 new missionaries. He came back. And mind you, he came back despite a death threat that the Raja of Marava had made four years earlier that he would kill him. The Jesuit missionary travelled at night from station to station. He travelled at night so that he could uh, in secret also celebrate Mass and uh, also to baptise converts. His success in converting the Prince Tadaya Theva indirectly led to his death. The prince, uh, already introduced to Christianity, was interested um, even more in Jesus and De, de Brito, um, dealing with, with the prince, insisted that the prince could keep only one of his several wives after his baptism. Now, the prince agreed to this condition, but one of his rejected wives went and complained to her uncle who was at that point of time the Raja of Marwa and the Raja then sent his soldiers to arrest the missionary um, John de Brito and they arrested him on the 28th of January in the year 1690. 
20 days later, the Raja exiled the Brito to Oriyur. Um, it was a neighboring province and the Raja's brother governed there. The Raja instructed his brother to execute uh, this troublesome Jesuit. And finally, uh, St. John the Brito was martyred at Oriyur in Tamil Nadu on the 11th of February in the year 1693. Pope Pius XII canonized him um, in the year 1947, the year India got her independence. So I want uh, to pray for you on this day. Uh, I want to pray especially um, for those who celebrate their birthdays to Ethan. Ethan is my cousin uh, Miriam's uh, son. And I want to pray for Ethan. I also want to pray for um, Gail who celebrates her birthday today. So happy birthday Gail. And also to Atul and Chanchal who celebrate their wedding anniversary today. And to uh, um, also my dear friends Zion and Shivangi. The other day Zion sent me a lovely photograph of Shivangi sitting and listening to the 9 o'clock with Father Warner and I was deeply uh, touched and tickled. Uh, thank you also. I also want to wish Atul and Chanchal. I was there for your wedding also for the wedding of Zion and Shivangi. But I uh, want to say a big, big thank you to Atul also for the tremendous help. Um, Atul was part of a group of um, young boys and girls when I was a seminarian called Helping Hands and we used to meet every second Sunday in Orlem. So uh, it's so happy and so wonderful to see that uh, the people that you ministered to, ministered with, um, I traveled with Sion, I remember, to, um, to the choir festival, the children's choir festival in Cologne many years ago. And today we have all grown to be good friends, them and their wives, and hopefully soon also their children. So God bless you all. Um, have a blessed day. Let's pray together for a few moments. Pray for the Jesuits uh, and also for the missions. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. We lift up to you today, Father, in heaven, the Jesuit community who have labored in your vineyard. We pray for Pope Francis, for all the Jesuits across the world, but especially in our archdiocese, for those who continue to work in the Madurai province. We pray for missionaries everywhere, Lord, especially those who face tremendous trials, struggles, opposition, persecution. Keep us bold in the faith, Lord, that should the hour and the moment come when you put us to the test to speak for you, we may not hesitate or falter, but bear testimony even to death. I want to pray, Lord Jesus, in a special way for our country, India. I pray that our political leaders may be open, open to permitting every religion to, be, to freely propagate, to freely practice, and also to freely promote their beliefs. I pray for a change of heart, especially where hatred is sown against Christians in our country. I pray that we, Christians, Lord, be held to a higher standard in our behavior and that through our good works, through our actions, we may bear witness to you. The Lord be with you and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed day. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends. And to all our donors of the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation and to our ministry, thank you. You can always contact me on via WhatsApp on 98202-42151. God bless you all.